with that said, I want to present our first presenter who we could not find a better person to open up the show. Um, Trenton Bennett was hugely impacted by Tawny and I will let him tell that story, but he is here uh, doing classic rock battles for his show, The Limey and the Yank. So Trenton, why don't you grab a spot and we will leave you to it. Yeah, thanks Trenton. Everybody, can you hear me okay? There you go. Do yes, we can hear you. All right, my buddy Steve is joining me. He's the co-host of Classic Rock Battles, The Limey and the Yank. Steve, go ahead and grab the spot. Yeah, you always grab the spot because right. you're American and you like to take <laughs> over. But go ahead, tell them what we're doing, buddy. Yeah, guys, um, Classic Rock Battles, The Limey and the Yank is a rock talk podcast that takes on the great debate from the UK to the USA, who really knows how to rock? And my co-host Steve and I get together, we talk about our favorite music and memories, and we argue over who's, we argue over whose music is better. But for today, we're going to take a little bit of a different tack, and we're going to take a moment and talk about how much Tawny and George have meant to us as well, um, just for aesthetic purposes right here there is my official dirty bits merchandise from the dirty bits podcast we loved that show and tawny and george had been fantastic um tawny got started in podcasting about the same time that we did and so she's been a really great help and we were very sad when we knew that um when george's health started to falter um we did a couple little things like we did a cross promotion and when the dirty bits podcast kind of went on hold for a little bit, we actually did a dirty bits in music episode where we kind of paid homage to her podcast and also talked about some dirty bits in rock and roll. So we were really, really sad when George passed away and we wanted to be able to help. We're so thankful to Josh and Hannah and everybody really who has put all of this together and Lainey. Thank you. Um, that said, though, I'm going to stop talking because I'm the American who runs his mouth. Are you kidding? Are you re do you really mean that? Would you sign for me? <laughs> Temporarily. With all what's going on, folks, we need your help. It, you know, it's so awful in this world to lose anybody, no matter what the age. But being so young and the help, not only losing a loved one, but to come up, and most people do, end up in debt. We need your help. Just like everybody in this world right now with the coronavirus and all what's going on, Tony needs all the help she can get. We're helping, and please, please, from the bottom of my heart, please help us. Help us get rid of this indebtedness so we can get on with our lives. She can get on out with her life and we can make a difference, each and every one of us in this world. Awesome. Well put, Steve. Thank you. Hey, so um, while we're on the subject, though, um, when it comes to that, there's a lot going on in this world. And we know, I mean, the reason this show was delayed for a little bit was to let the world start to come to grips with the other challenges we've had with the racial unrest, the difficulty, uh, the, the, the riots, the protests, the Black Lives Matter movement. We totally support diversity and inclusion. We support peace, love, and understanding. And to that extent, Steve and I have talked a little bit about how there's music that can change your life. There's music that can really influence you. And then there's music that's just there to help cheer you up when you're down, to, to lift your spirits in, in rough times. Music, what it's all about. But also, we have to have and still keep our sense of humor, especially right now. God bless all those lives that have been lost through the coronavirus. But we have to keep our spirits high and we have to unite as individuals and unite, as we say, the United States and the free world and to support each other and to help each other and to do whatever's possible to make each other happy. The, the Yank and I, we do it through music, and hopefully we've changed people's lives through the music that we do. And we have to keep our sense of humor. Correct me if I'm wrong, Yank. 
you still got a sense of humor when you lose somebody too. Otherwise, it's all the way down. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, that's that's a good point because one of the things Tawny has done that I guess came from a position of struggle but turned into strength is that the Death is Hilarious podcast has been a really great way to help people cope with grief through humor. And it's, you know, I'm laughing just thinking about it because I've listened to these episodes. I was on an episode, but uh, the stuff I've been listening to, it's it's so weird, human nature, to to be laughing and kind of find a little bit of joy knowing that life goes on, even though that doesn't change the fact that death sucks and all that, <laughs> you know, there's a lot to take on. And how wonderful Tawny could do and be inspired how many people can do that to be inspired and to help other people and to say, what does Monty Python do? Oh, look on the bright side of life. And that's what she's done. I mean, and so prematurely and so sudden and such an impact. I want, I don't want to get too emotional because I want to make everybody happy and motivated, but take it away, Yank. I'll come back. Hey, you know what? The thing about it is that uh, there's a lot coming at us. It can be pretty overwhelming at times. And yeah, we use our podcast to kind of be a, a space where you can you can take a moment and just kind of get get past it all. It's okay to have feelings that, you know, things are difficult, whether it's COVID-19 or social unrest or you know, obviously losses like Tawny's ultimately you just, it's okay to have those feelings and work through them. You just got to not let them overwhelm you. You just got to let it, let yourself get past it a little bit. And to that extent, the other day we were talking about how there's some really good songs that are just kind of tried and true music that'll make you happy and can be inspiring. I'm going to go ahead, buddy. And I'll give you my first one, which was um, Sly and the Family Stone, the song Everyday People. A lot of you know this, but the neat thing about it is when you get to the bridge of it where they're singing, I am everyday people, every vocalist in the band is singing because they're trying to give you the message that we're all in this together. Every one of us, we're all everyday people and we all belong together. I love it, man. That's why we're called the United States. We should be united, not being divided, but to unite and make the world a better place. Well, what are what are some of your tunes that you are your go to tunes when you're feeling down? You know me, I like happy. Look on the bright side of life. <laughs> All those. I mean, the great thing about this world right now is, even though we're locked up and we can't get out there, we have everything at our fingertips. Any music that you want to play, you can play any time. You can dance, you can sing, you can be happy. You can, with the multimedia now, we can do anything we want. So it depends which way you look at it. Are we locked up or can we look for things that are going to motivate us, going to make us happier? Are we going to spread the, spread the world of love, joy, peace, and harmony? We can do that. We can download anything we want. You know, whether it's half empty or half full, I know my feelings. I like to have it half full. Let's do it. Let's communicate like this. Let's spread the word of joy, peace, love, and harmony. Like I said, the Yankee Night, we do it through music. We do our podcast to make people feel happy, to make people feel motivated, and especially in the time of trouble and need. And to all you people out there that have lost people through the virus and that are going through crisis, and we all are right now because it affects everybody, let's do something about it. And with the only way we can do something about it is individually, whether it's good or bad. Me, I keep away from the bad. And I keep away from the weirdos like the yank. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> but let's... Not too much away. This is his <laughs> doing. I mean, he got rid of my quarantine here. Thank goodness. <laughs> hey, you know, while we're on the subject, we do have... We... Go ahead. 
Excuse me. We do have some really fun, uplifting resources from last year when I look back. Uh, like I mentioned, last summer we did a pair of episodes that were the dirty bits in music, and we got a little naughty and kind of funny. But we also had a pair of episodes earlier in the year just called Happy that's all about happy songs, including Happy by Pharrell and uh, Bobby McFerrin. Don't worry. Be happy. But yeah, those those are some things you can go back and check out and just... You'll hear these songs and you go, oh, yeah, I remember that one. And yeah, I don't know. There's just something about it that's kind of infectious and puts you in a good mood. And that's that's the good thing about music is it can help you get through. And let's know in our hearts, God willing, in a year from now, all this virus. Can I say crap? All, I think so. All this. It's the interwebs. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully we'll move on and we'll have a normal life and we can laugh about it the people that survive it can laugh about it and we can learn by it and we can appreciate even more the freedoms and the love and the everything that the united states england and the free world has to offer and to cherish it even more, to be loving to even more, and to get out and to show it and to appreciate it and to enjoy it. And speaking of which, uh, on the subject of love, there's this really fantastic little bit of trivia that um, we were sharing the other day in our live stream, which is that the Beatles song, All You Need Is Love, it was written specifically for a global satellite broadcast that I think was to, I don't know, 50 different countries. I forget, but it was, it was aimed at, at a massive amount of people. I think it was 400 million people worldwide were going to see this live satellite broadcast and the Beatles needed to come up with a song that was just right for everybody just to bring the world together. So they deliberately wrote all you need is love and love is all you need is the simplest, easiest message for people in just about any culture, whether English is your first, second, or third language, to understand, get the message, and be able to sing along. It was an amazing thing in 1967, and it's the reason there's actually a holiday now. June 25th is considered World Beatles Day, and it's a celebration of that time where the Beatles brought us all together and gave us a simple message of love. That's, How cool is that? That's what we need to do, and love is given. And all you people out there that do have something to give, give to Tawny. The loss of a loved one is the worst thing in the world that can happen to anybody, especially at a young age. And like I said at the beginning of our show, to give what you have to give to help people come out of it and to heal and to move on with their life. People shouldn't have to deal with financial woes, financial losses, especially when you've lost a loved one. It's hard enough when life is normal. So please, please, to anybody out there, we're asking for your help, for Tony, and God bless George. And thank you so much for tuning in. This is awesome. So, you know, along those lines, too, when it comes to being able to help, Every day, you know, we, we, we're a positive show, but we don't turn a blind eye to it. It doesn't mean you ignore what's out there. You just recognize that you can't take all of it on yourself and you find ways to kind of help get your coping mechanisms. And one of those to me is the realization that as difficult as things can seem sometimes, ultimately we'll get through it. And I feel like one of the ways we're going to get through it is pulling together with events like this one. I mean, this is just amazing to bring so many people together to help one person. And I think we're all going to be able to do a little bit of that here and there because difficult times are here and difficult times are ahead, but we'll get through it. We've actually been through worse as crazy as that may sound. I know some of our history podcasters can give us better examples. So, you know, stay hopeful, <laughs> stay positive. You know, throughout history, if you look what's happening to us right now, I don't, I haven't seen anything worse, even in World War II. But call me over optimistic. I believe in my heart of all hearts, any terrible, awful situation, we can either go down with it or we can either make us even better 
more productive, more loving, and we can unite even more. And that's what we have to do for our children and our children's children. We have to give and we have to do it. And I, I don't see any alternate situation. Maybe it's just me, but I'm spreading the word, baby. As you <laughs> That's say, right. As we say in America, <laughs> come on, all you blokes. We've been at a little bit at a crossroads because just before all of this hit, Steve and I were talking about how we wanted to get into live streaming, which I think you may have noticed that might be trending a little bit. So we we agreed, thank you, Steve, to take a break from putting out the episodes long enough to give us the chance to completely redo our website, retool the show for streaming and do all that stuff. So here we are looking at how, oh, it'd be really great to talk to people, but we can't do it on the regular right now because we want to be there for you guys, especially for our, you know, the, the people who listen to our show. But ultimately, when we come back in the fall, it's going to be fantastic. When we start doing the new episodes and it's a lot easier to do stuff like this, this Get Vocal platform is a huge help. You know, I have to say this about my fellow. Well, I'm English-American. I have the best of both sides of it. But, you know, they just opened the pubs this week. And everybody's having the pints and the pubs and the fish and chips and the steak and <laughs> kidney puddings. To all my dare I say, ex-fellow English people, before you buy that extra pint, get your hand in your pocket and donate to a <laughs> wonderful cause. You'll appreciate It is a little bit easier to do that than to just mail Tawny a Guinness. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> You'll appreciate Harder us. to get in the mail. And in the morning, you won't have a big hangover either. Uh, and there'll be a less hangover. Just, just a little one. And, yeah, and you'll wake up going, you know what? I did something good for somebody. I helped him out of a terrible situation. So, okay, forget the other pint. Get your hand in your pocket and donate to a wonderful, wonderful cause, people. Hey, Laney's wondering if kidney puddings are really a thing. I, I'm thinking maybe you made that up. You know what? For all you, well, I'm half American, but for all you Americans, when I talk to Americans, I go, yeah, you know what I could just do with a steak and kidney pudding, chips, and mushy peas. Well, I won't get into the mushy peas because it'll probably turn you off your breakfast. But it's not kidney beans, folks. To all you Americans, it's kidneys, lamb's kidneys. Do I sound like Hannibal Lecter? <laughs> it does sound a little bit true crime the way you say that. <laughs> Kidney beans. Lamb's kidneys. <laughs> and all Carefully that. ground into a paste. <laughs> With gravy. <laughs> and you know what? If you've had a couple of extra pints, you throw a fish on top. Don't forget the malt vinegar. you got to have malt vinegar and salt. None of that tartar sauce crap. I can say crap, right? Hey, so I know that New England isn't really all that new anymore. It's, it's kind of more like um, been around for a while, England but it's not the same as merry old England, right? That's all right. But you one guys of the big stole meals... everything from us. <laughs> <laughs> but what, one of the big meals up there, that's roast beef and Yorkshire pudding. And I heard one of our listeners mention that on our show the other day. Yorkshire pudding. You, you got to have pudding, roast beef, Yorkshire pudding, roast potatoes, a good Sunday dinner. But yeah, come to think of it, Yank, you took everything from us. No one, you called it New England. But you you also have like York, Manchester. You couldn't figure out your own names. So what you well, did? Well, we were polite. We didn't call it like new to you England or after new and improved England. After kicking our ass, <laughs> you said, "Oh, you know what? Let's take their let let's take their towns and we'll make them our own towns." You know, hey, speaking New of which, York, New York, which is one <laughs> yes. of my favorite places. Not York, but you know what? We're going to have a new. And we're going to call it New York. But it was once New Amsterdam. <laughs> Why they changed it, I can't say. Well, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, while we're on the subject, though, I got to tell you, one of my favorite episodes was the 1958 one we did, where we actually talked about the song, The Battle of New Orleans. All right. So for those Not of you who don't you, know, that's 59, but that's okay. 
Yeah, 59. Thank you. That's the 1959 right. episode, the thing about it is the song The Battle of New Orleans, for those of you who don't know, is a folk song that has to do with the Americans defeating the British and the British just started a running down to the Gulf of Mexico. <laughs> and what's funny about this is in that same year, that song charted in the UK and the USA. That's all right, because it was a good song. But he always wants to get into <laughs> it. The way I grew up in our history, we could have beat you guys. We were too busy fighting Spain and France. And plus, we had these big red coats on, and we wanted to fight proper. But what did you guys do? You hung out on trees, had your lunch, and picked us off. But well, no, we took away your, your tea. You were under caffeinated and you weren't ready. Oh. <laughs> That's what happened. You didn't fight Everybody fairly. Was sleepy. You didn't fight fairly, <laughs> but that's okay because we're all united as one. And I must say, in this world now, there's never been two countries so united than England and America. Uh, pardon my French, Great Britain, which means Scotland. Ireland, Northern Ireland, and all the people that are Brits throughout the world. What about the, those big fish that swim in the ocean? You know, the, the whales? <laughs> I'm sorry, and I forgot. Did you leave one out? Did you forget one? I forgot the Welsh. But we have, <laughs> you know, we have Australia too, which is, you know, they still recognize the Queen. We still have Canada. You know, we may be a small country, but we have a lot of influence and our influence and American influence needs to unite and we need to connect and spread the love of joy. But all this besides, please in your heart of all hearts, if you can find any way to donate to this wonderful cause that we're bringing today for Tony and George You'd break hey, a, break those our of you hearts. who are just tuning in also, um, five bucks is a raffle ticket, if I understand correctly, from our lovely host. So um, you get a chance to raffle, uh, enter a raffle for merchandise so you can get goodies. We don't really have podcast merch, but we are definitely raffling off a chance to have an Ask Me Anything call with us, and we'll get on Zoom with you, and we'll have fun just like this. I don't know if that's a good thing, buddy. That could get us into trouble. Maybe they should ask you, and I'd like to review the question before they ask me. But yeah. I've noticed some folks are pointing out a little bit of a Casey Kasem sound to my voice, so I just wanted you to know that we're here counting them down. You can ask us anything within reason, so it doesn't get us into trouble or it doesn't get us arrested. But anything or any ideas of the next shows for the fall, what we're bringing out, and of course, like the Yank says, Everything's going to be positive. Everything's going to be wonderful. And we're going to spread the word of love and joy to everybody out there. So we're going to stick something up there, pardon my French, and get everybody motivated. Is that all French? I was not sure. Oh, Sherry, does your dog bite? <laughs> What's it? Vive la différence. No, Inspector Crusoe, does your dog bite? I thought it you said it doesn't done. bite. Yeah. <laughs> See, go ahead. Oh my go and take it. That's why I love you so much. You want to grab on what I was going to do. That's not my dog. All right. I just didn't want to drag it out because that comedic timing is that's a that's like a two minute bit, but it All is right. definitely the one everyone remembers. Everybody hey, out that was there? an English actor, you know. Oh, shut up, yeah. You talk too much. No, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. <laughs> Look on the bright side of life. Okay, everybody. So, you know, speaking of death, um, speaking of death, yeah, I showed my daughter, who is now 21, I showed her Life of Brian. We showed her that a few months ago. And I got to say, even though she'd seen Monty Python, she was familiar with the idea. When you get to the end, and spoiler alert, it's not necessarily a happy ending. Uh, when you get to the end and everybody's nailed up to crosses and they're all just waiting to die. And the next thing you know, you got a fellow sing and always look on the bright side of life. That is one of the funniest little death is hilarious moments in cinema. I think I've ever seen. And she didn't know what to do with it. She's like, what just <laughs> happened? <laughs> because the movie couldn't get any more bizarre, but they saved the best for the end. I love it, buddy. That's one of my best. The, the ending death is the best 
thing going in Monty Python when <laughs> he knocks on the door, the Grim Reaper, and goes, who is that? It's, he says he's Mr. Death. Well, I think you better let him in then, haven't you? And then oh, he's, yes, the meaning of life. Yes, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, that is amazing. And what, what does he <laughs> say? Like, you're all dead. The salmon moose. <laughs> you Americans, you yeah. go on and on and you talk and you talk. Yeah, well, you should know about that, shouldn't you? <laughs> right? You're the male version of the lady with I the really blonde I really identified hair. with that. It was so relatable to me when Death said that. <laughs> and what he said about the English. You know, the funniest thing about humor and movies and everything, the <laughs> truth in humor is the funniest thing ever, isn't it? It is. It keeps us going. Thick and thin, good and bad. That's always the one common thread that humans have is the ability to laugh it off and move on. But sometimes we need help. And that's that's part of why this event is a fantastic thing that I hope truly helps Tawny cope with the massive amounts of medical bills that she has kind of lingering over her head before she can truly continue everything else that's going on in her life. And if you haven't checked out the Death is Hilarious podcast, definitely do so. I'm just, I'm loving that. That's that's fantastic. Amazing. Uplifting. And unfortunately, there's too much death going on than what we'd like right now at this moment in history. And hopefully, it's going to change. But, you know, the yep. good thing is with the, was it Richie, Ricky DeVace when he said, when you die, it really isn't going to matter because you won't know you're dead because you'll be dead. <laughs> that does kind of uh, dampen the experience. It makes it difficult to participate beyond a certain point. <laughs> Funny guy, man. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Hey, did you have any other, did you have any other positive songs like the ones we did for our show notes last time? I just united. We stand divided. We fall. Yes. That was a good one. Yeah. Everything that, every song that unites us, like you said, uh, and John Lennon, not just because he's English, but, you know, power to the people too. You know, that's a great song to, for us to talk about right now. Power to the people. It's not the politicians. It's not the people that think they're running the country. At the end of the day, the people run the country. And it's how we run it reflects on who is in charge. I just thought I'd say that. Absolutely. You know, it reminds me, one of the ones that I'd mentioned at the time was Gil Scott Heron, who was a fantastic, he was kind of like a spoken word poet and, and jazz musician, but also in the early days of rap, he was a strong influence on the birth of rap. And partly because his words were all about being awake, being aware and being active, not letting people commercialize your culture, not giving in to the easy ability to just lie back and let the media tell you how to live. And um, the big song there is the revolution will not be televised. Nice. Definitely look that one up. We'll start socializing some of these. Uh, we've got a whole list that we put together that we've been talking about that are really good for awareness and just opening up your mind. And that's one of them. Amazing. That's why I like hanging around with you, Yank. You have some good <laughs> ideas and some good thoughts and I'm with you a hundred percent, buddy. So please, please, everybody, do the best you can for Tony and for a loss. Please give what you can. I know economic times, the times we're in are tough, but if you have anything to spare, God bless you. But at the end of the day, just like the Aztecs and the people in the long last world before us try to take all the stuff with them i think it's still there you know that's Get true though it's really well kept it's almost like if you would think about the ancient egyptians as being better at packaging their action figures than anybody from the 1970s on i mean we just use plastic these guys hold buildings for their collection it's pretty amazing it's what you give in this life that matters and hopefully we're all given for good, for love, for honesty, and to help one another 
through this time of crisis, especially the crisis of a loved one. Please, please, please help us, folks. If there's anything you can do, even if it's not monetary, state your claim, tell us how you feel, and what else we can do to help one another to achieve these goals. I do want to take a moment and say, too, because as our hosts have told you, Tawny has done a lot for both podcasting and voiceover. When I was first getting started in voiceover and I met her, she was a fantastic colleague who could give me advice and suggest groups to follow and people to, to get to know. And I've made so many amazing connections in that industry, specifically because of her advice. But also, we were both starting our podcast at about the same time. So sometimes I'd be like asking her for advice or we'd be comparing notes on what we were trying to do. And I'm like, that's so helpful. It's good to have someone to talk to. I didn't realize that we had this. We have a massive group in this area, the Florida Podcasters Association. They're fantastic people. They're doing a big global event, but I'm not here to like promote that. I'm just here to say that before I knew any of that group, Tawny was kind of my go-to person to say, hey, what do you think about this? And even though at the time she kept calling herself tech terrible, it was actually really useful to have somebody to help bounce ideas off of and get, you know, both of our shows got going at about the same time. So I was so thrilled to watch the Dirty Bits succeed. The Dirty Bits. There you go. So I'm sorry to see it go, but I absolutely understand because Death is Hilarious was a great way to, to uh turn a difficult time into something good. And I think particularly the time that she's brought it up and gone into this podcast with the coronavirus and the people that have lost so many loved ones, how wonderful is she to do such a thing? I mean, she deserves the Medal of Honor. She deserves something fantastic, especially your support, folks. Please, I mean, you look at somebody that's lost a loved one and so tragically and so soon and so prematurely. How can you not? <laughs> John was saying Tawny is the absolute best with his advice, and he's absolutely correct. I agree. She's fantastic. In fact, she recently worked on a couple of demos with me. And I just can't, I can't say enough for all the help that she's provided people and how she's gone out of her way to help others. So that's really what it's all about as we get through these difficult times. I didn't say these challenging times or these trying times. I think we're tired of those phrases. But as we get through all the things and we get to the other side of all the things, helping each other is what's going to do it. We only have one time, one life, and one world and one United States. Let's do it, folks. Let's unite together. Let's help each other. Let's help Tony in whatever way you can. And let's spread the word of love, peace, and joy to one another. One another. You know, often on our show, we argue with each other about whose rock and roll is better. But I just wanted to give you an example of how, how at the end of the day, what really matters is we have each other. If you look at the Englishman right now on his camera, behind him on the wall is the American king of rock and roll. Oh, man, I should have put the Beatles. If I turn, <laughs> if I turn, gotcha. it, I turn it the other way, <laughs> we've got the Beatles there too. But, you know, that's what, it, that's what makes it great, isn't it? Isn't that? That's right. That's, uh, thank, you, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, that's, that's definitely what makes America great. But that's what makes it it's a fantastic country with a lot of cool things. No, and a lot of that's what makes karate. it great is us stealing your music, <laughs> singing it in the English accent. I'm an irradiate fire and irradiate fire and making it sound better than you guys. But I don't want to look at it as stealing. I want to look at it. And just like well, we did steal all the H's. I'll take credit for that. So we are Henry the eighth over here. Yeah. Well, you know what, buddy? You <laughs> All a lot more than the H's, but we don't say her, we go H. So we, we use the A before the her. But there, oh, the silent imaginary yeah, A. Yeah, but there again, the like we talked about <laughs> see, stealing cities and stuff, you steal our words too and you change them around and you make them different. Just like driving on the other side of the road What's up with that, man. It's the right side of the road. No, 
it's the wrong side of the road because we will. I don't know. Did we? Well, we're, there's something sinister about bearing left. No, we were riding horses. <laughs> For the word no matter out whether there, you're walking <laughs> or riding horses or jogging or what, we started it on one side. What did you do? You changed it, but that's okay. It just it's a bit weird. We were just trying to balance it out because we knew that if we were going to be driving on the right side of the road and you guys would be driving on the left side of the road, then the Earth's orbit wasn't going to get tilted on its axis from all of that. Oh, you know, a load uneven. of BS. <laughs> yeah, everybody That's knows. science. Yeah, <laughs> science. <laughs> I was a straight C student in the sciences. Yeah. Can you tell? <laughs> yeah, you're trying to make up, but it's not helping. <laughs> hey, we pay extra money for your beer. Oh, have we got anybody That's become a big deal now? I mean, it, it's imported here over there. It's just domestic and local. Those guys down the street that make the Guinness. Those guys down the street, you mean over the pond? That would be the Irishman. And actually I was That's there true. last year and anybody that hasn't visited the Guinness factory is awesome. If you go to Dublin, make a point of going to the Guinness factory and the Jameson factory. Not that I'm promoting alcohol, but it's really good to see how they started it off and made it work and made it so unique and different. You know, you should go. I used to live in the land of bourbon and horses. So I agree. That's the kind of thing that's kind of fun to do to learn how it's made. Bourbon and horses. You don't want to get on a horse if you've been drinking bourbon anyway. Oh, that's right. Why? Kentucky. That's how you get home. <laughs> Look, at least in the 19th century, it was. The only thing that the came out the way home, even if you were blotto. <laughs> the thing that came out of your state was chicken and horses. What else have you got? Or it may be basketball, but I must have bourbon, bluegrass, basketball, <laughs> all the B stuff. Bluegrass. Thoroughbreds has a B in it. Yeah, I don't believe that. Well, you didn't have too much. I don't want to rub it in because, you know, <laughs> Great Britain has so much more to offer, but that's okay. I love it. Hannah says that Jameson is her go-to, and Phil Rude says that he delivers Guinness and would love to cross the pond and see where it originates from. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> Take pictures if you go. <laughs> I love it, man. And we love you, folks. And if anybody yep. out there is listening to us, hopefully there'll be some people, right? Yes, absolutely. Please listen to us. Please, 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 whatever you can find to help Tony and her situation and the love that she's given out to people. I just love helping great people, man. We don't have a lot of chance to go out to the bars or go out to Starbucks. So that's a little bit of extra cash that maybe you can set aside. Because like I said, that's better than trying to mail her a Guinness. Definitely not the kind of thing where you want to try to fit the latte in and get the little green travel plug and say, yep, that's good to go. They won't take that at the post office. Uh, true story. The only thing in this world that's certain is death and taxes. In between, it's all about what we do for one another. I, I was born in taxes, sir. <laughs> so I understand that, that taxes is very important to our culture. Tax... Texas. I'm talking about oh, taxes. You don't you, know my accent? No, no. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't understand. Texas, taxes. but we need to pray for Texas too because they're going through some terrible, terrible times right now. Yes, yes, we do. Texas needs help too. Right. Go ahead. But we're in Florida, which is the natural habitat of Florida, man. So we'll be fine because even if things get difficult, things will probably get just weird enough to handle all the difficult and it'll all kind of even out. Keep your sense of humor. If you Stay get, positive. If you get bored and you got nothing to do, tune into the Limey and the Yank. We'll make you happier. We'll make you feel great. We'll hopefully direct you to wonderful tunes that will do everything for you. Get up and shake your booty. Do whatever it takes to make you motivated. And I must admit, the reason why we got into what we do, buddy, is because we wanted to help people feel happier, feel motivated, and to enjoy the life. And apart from 
our higher power and our family and our loved ones, the number one reason to do that in my book is music. We are all about the music and the happy memories and kind of helping people either discover stuff they'd never heard before or be reminded of something that gives them a really good memory. So we've got a Facebook group, Classic Rock Battles, the Limey and the Yank podcast, where we love for people to give us show ideas. And we've got a page. And we do have the website, the thelimeyandtheyank.com, as weird as that is to type. And sometime in August, it's going to have a whole new look, if not sooner. So it'll be a lot more fun to play with. But in the meantime, when you hear music on the show, if it puts you in a good mood, if it makes you happy, we also have a page on the website where you can go grab that song from Amazon. We give you a download link. So if you ever if you ever decide you really do need Pharrell Williams happy, but you don't have that whole album, then you can just run right out there and pull down happy. Put that on. Loop it with Bobby McFerrin. <laughs> Don't forget, you're not stuck, you're not quarantined, and you're not in prison. Even though I don't know, did the prisoners, did they have the internet? I don't know. God bless, I've never been in prison. I don't know about you, Yang. Not to- it's very difficult for folks incarcerated right now. Yeah. So yeah, our hearts go out to them too. But like I say, it depends which way you look at it about being incarcerated. You can be but you're not because you have everything at your fingertips. You can pull up that favorite tune, those favorite songs that make you feel wonderful, that make you feel happy, make you enjoy life and take you away from all this negativity that we see on the news and everything else. So do it, crank it up and maybe to our friend, get the Jameson out too. Just a little bit. That's right. Because you're not driving anywhere. So, you know, what the heck? You can have a couple of brews. Is it okay to mix Jameson and Guinness or is that a terrible thing? How dare you? That is so sacrilege. <laughs> only, I just wanted to see what your face would look only like. Only the Guinness that. people are allowed to say, you know what? Guinness, the only thing I think you're allowed to put with it, black coat. Oh, I thought it was like more Guinness. <laughs> You've been t- I'm mixing. You've been talking to too many Irish. <laughs> it's uh, a homogenous mix yeah, of Guinness I'm and more Guinness. Yeah, no, like a, a splash of uh, black currant is good. Just like when you have a lager and lime, like lager, you know, like the light beer, as you would call Budweiser. You would put like a little splash of uh, roses, lime juice, just to refresh you. So, oh, there you go. You know what? I know we're going to get a great response from people. I know people are going to give because it's such a wonderful cause. And after you gave, celebrate. Have your happy yeah. hour. Yeah, <laughs> you have happy hour, right? I've heard of this thing. Yeah, you Americans do that. You have to make one hour to make you guys happy. You should be happy all the time. And then when, is it four o'clock? I don't know. All right, four or five, whatever. You just want to get happier. How about get happier hour instead of hour? Get happier. So everything is a happy hour except for the happier hour? I love, don't you love that? Let's spread it. No pressure, but yeah, we can make this happen. Okay, folks, get happier, (laughs) happy hour. Everybody, four (laughs) o'clock, let's get happier. But no talking because you won't be able to talk properly. And on that note, folks, it is just about time for us to wind it up because we go off at two o'clock. So uh, when I see this little clock tick over, I want to go ahead and say a fond farewell to everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for supporting Tani and helping her get through this. We are so thrilled to be here. And we just can't say enough for everybody involved in this. You're fantastic people. And thank you so much. As you can see, we can't stop talking, but... Especially on a good cause, it's even easier. I could keep on this marathon forever. Thank you (laughs) for anybody and all you people that are listening to the Limey and the Yank. Classic rock battles. What do you think, Hannah? You must, you you must be, your, (laughs) you must, your ancestry, you must be from like Europe with a name like Hannah. Yeah, um, I think Irish, which is why I'm so addicted to Jameson, probably. 
<laughs> Hello there, chop of the morning to you. <laughs> Like I got plenty of Scots said. Irish too. My beard grows out bright red. Really? Josh, I love <laughs> yes. what you're doing, Josh. Wow. Uh, thank you, you. Are, you, yep. you guys are something else. <laughs> it makes me feel wonderful to be an American, well, English American. <laughs> well, you go you. and get them. Thank you for letting us spend this time and giving us this hour <laughs> to spread our love. And hopefully, we've made a difference. I'll see you on the other side, Yank. And yep. from the English you, and the British side, God bless you. And thank you so much, guys. Go get them. All right. Thank Take care. Thank you everybody. so much. Appreciate it. I appreciate you. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, uh, Steve and Trenton from the Limey and the Yank. And you should subscribe to their show if you enjoyed their banter. And how could you not? Um,